Welcome to BBC Schools News Report at Ashmole Academy. Over the past few months, our reporters have been collecting a range of stories from different aspects of life in our 21st century school communities. Our sports correspondents have been looking for talent in our school. We go over to the sports desk to tell you more. Thank you, Emily. Jenny, one of our sports reporters, visited our school's elite sports forum around four weeks ago. In her article, she talks about Elliot, a national swimmer, and how he manages to balance school and swimming. Elsewhere, Clara and I interviewed Nathaniel. Clara, can you give us any more information? Well, Rachel, as a school, we're all immensely proud of him. He has managed to reach international standards in his 200 and 100 metre records. Currently, he is the second fastest boy in the world for his age category, which is an amazing achievement. In the interview, we discovered the impact of sports in his life and his diet. Education has been very much on all of our radars recently, with the changes to the GCSE system being most prominent. To this end, we have some reports focusing on academic choices, from catering to engineering to universities. Sabrina looks into catering, while Owen deals with engineering, and one of our older reporters, Charisma, discusses her recent visit to Cambridge and whether an university is appropriate for everyone. Another Year 12 student, Susie, reports on her recent visit to the UCAS con convention in Olympia. Furthermore, Romy in Year 10 discusses how your school experience can be enriched while attending extracurricular activities such as create a writing club. Another big issue of today is the state of fish stocks and the sea that, seas that support them. Ellie now joins us in the studio to talk about this issue. So Ellie, what is this interview about? It's an interview with my sister about fish stocks and our seas in general. What prompted you to write it? Well, my sister was studying this and similar issues in geography and uh, she thought it was an important topic, so at the weekend she wrote into Parliament and when she received a reply, I thought it was something worthy of reporting about. Thank you. Hello, this is Chloe and I'm going to be interviewing her about a letter she received from 10 Downing Street. So Chloe, what was the letter actually about? Well, it was about overfishing and I decided to write the letter because we were doing a geography lesson and the subject of overfishing came up and I started to worry that it was going to cause an effect on fish and the seas. Okay, and why did you feel so strongly about this particular topic? Well, it wasn't the only topic I learned, but I didn't like fish being killed unnecessarily. So that's why I wrote the letter, and that's why I feel strongly about it. In general, do you think that enough people know about this issue? I think some people know, but yes and no. Do you think they do enough about it? No. I think that fish are being thrown away, wasted, and nothing is happening about it. Okay. And just from background knowledge, maybe in this geography lesson, did you learn about any other countries where this sort of thing happens? I learned that China overfishes tuna in the lesson, and I also learned that Spain overfishes, well, everything. And in China, um, as you mentioned, tuna, has that actually had any effect on the tuna population? Yeah, they're becoming endangered. And we saw this video in the lesson where it showed this big market of raw tuna and there were dozens and thousands of them. Okay, so Chloe, an important question now. If you were the Prime Minister, how would you stop or reduce this problem? Well, I think I would go to the fishermen directly and say or ask what they could do about it. Make sure that they actually knew of the issue themselves? Exactly. Oh, okay. So, have you actually received any other letters concerning this issue from 10 Downing Street? Well, 10 Downing Street, the letter I got, said they would pass it on to the Environment Forum for food, fish, and all of those kind of things. Similar topics? Yeah. So then I got a letter from the environment, or ECRA, as ECRA. I think they called it, um, and which said that there will always be fish in the sea, and yeah. That they were dealing with the issue? Well, 
that there will always be fish in the sea, you know. They didn't really explain anything else, just a lot of details of how fish were being treated and, yeah. So they reassured you? Yeah, definitely. Okay, thank you, Chloe. Back to you in the studio. There are many issues that affect teenagers in 2013, and these range from healthy eating to use of technology and smartphones. Our reporters Emily and Stassi focus on these issues. One of the best ways to deal with things you're passionate about is to speak out about them. Charisma poses the question, is religion relevant to teenagers today? In addition, Sophie joins us in the studio to share her experience at the Jack Petchy Speak Out Challenge. So, Sophie, what's your involvement with the Speak Out Challenge? It was a one-day event at Ashmole School, and it's a programme centred around helping young adults aged 14 to 15 to be more confident with their speaking in public environments. So what's prompted you to write an article about it? Well, communication is a long-term thing that you do not just in your academic life, but throughout your whole experience. And I wanted to let everyone know that it's really important for things not just like school assessments, but also university, jobs. You always have to communicate with people, and I think everyone should know that that's a really important thing. Thank you. For our final story, we join Sabrina to tell us more about studying catering. Hello, my name is Sabrina, and I'm here with Rafaela to talk about her chosen subject, catering, and why she chose it. So, Rafaela, firstly, what captivates you as a GCSE student to take such a contributing subject? Well, I've always been interested in catering, and I've watched my mum and dad cook since I was young, so I thought I'd join in. I see. Linking on to that, what encourages you to progress further in the subject and take it as a GCSE? Well, I always wanted to learn the new techniques that I never could when I was younger. What activities and foods do you make during your lessons? Well, each time we have a different topic. For example, last time we did baking and pastry making. That sounds tempting. A point I'm intrigued to ask is that would you like to take catering further and pursue it as a career in the future? I don't think I could ever cook in a restaurant because it seems a bit hectic. So I think I'd be more into teaching. What would you say to other Year 9 students to encourage you to take this subject and why technology subjects are so important? I'd say it's not all fun and play, like, there's a theory side to it which is very important, but learning about all the different establishments really was fun. This comes to show how important GCSE subjects really are. Thank you. Back to the studio. We hope you enjoy reading the rest of these stories. Thanks for tuning in. You've been watching Ashmole Academy's BBC School News Report. Goodbye.